Hi, everyone. How's it going? Welcome to the Holly Crafting Hour here in my in my attic. Um, so uh, I usually stream on this side. I don't know if you know, like over here, I have that's you. So I finally set it up so I can show you guys how to make some crafts and get some crafts. Also, make sure make sure to to donate and do things. And there's giveaways and all kinds of fun stuff. I'm going to try and look at the camera because my camera's right here, but the chat is over here. So I'm like, but I want to look, but I don't. Uh, uh. All right. Anyway, so watch this. Watch this coolness. Are you ready? I put makeup on for nothing because you're not going to be looking at me past two minutes. Oh, oh, craft time. Whoa, whoa. Look, what we, look at this. Look at this newness, this new hotness. Oh. Anyway, how's everyone doing? Everyone gonna, it's so good to be doing some fun, silly D and D stuff. I've missed it. It's it's good fun. It's Bob Ross hour, yeah. See, now I can look to the side, and no one, you'll, none of you will know what I'm doing. All right, I'm gonna scoot the sky over there just a tiny bit. Okay, perfect. All right, first, I'm gonna show you guys. Uh, I know hot glue gun. Will I burn myself? Let's take bets. The answer is probably not as surprising as you think. Um, so I'm going to show you guys the dice that I will be giving away. These are the new dice that I'm going to be having in our We Growing Hen store soon, but they're mood dice. Oh my gosh. And there's a little spooky eyeball on the one, but watch they're blue right now. I'm going to close my hand on them right now. And then they're going to be waiting up. No, they're still blue. Am I too cold or are they too hot? Hold on. <laughs> oh no, no, I'm too, I'm too cold. <laughs> <laughs> but if I hold them for a moment, there's just getting more blue. Hold on. I might be too cold. Oh yeah. See, okay. See, here's them. Now they're green. These ones are cold. Boop. Boop. Okay. Now it's changing colors. Now you can see it. It's so pretty. So it's like, you know, like mood rings. That's pretty much what it is. Hold on. I'm going to make, I'm going to make there. Now they're changing colors. I like, so I actually use them in my home game. And I just like, like, I'll just literally play with them for way too long. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's so fun. So yeah, giveaways. Wee. And then on the one, there's a little crying eyeball. This is the, we're, Kayla and I are working on a fun little, like, uh, spooky scout zine thing, which is going to be fun. A little RPG action. But so there's silver and gold. And you can win either of these sets that I've just handled. And then we'll sanitize. <laughs> All right, let's make a mimic. What do you what do you say? Okay, so first things first, I'm going to give you a little a little uh, fun fun tutorial. So this is a little box you can get from Michaels, and pretty much all that's been done to this guy right here is um, it's been stained with a wood stain. So if you go to Michaels or any craft store, or I mean, if you feel really compelled to make one yourself, you can do that too. Um, but more or less, it's just one of those tiny little wooden chests from Michael's covered in a wood stain and then a little bit of varnish. Um, this one just has a little symbol on the top of it. We're going to cover that up. It's just going to show you guys what we can do. So there we go. Um, and make sure to tell me in the chat if you have any questions while we're going along. I put some crystals here for aesthetic <laughs> just because, um, but yeah, so stain actually does a lot to these. It actually makes it look a lot better. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick an eyeball that we want on this little mimic friend right now. So you've probably seen these before. Um, a lot of people have made similar things like um, kind of this is the ultimate goal. This is just a little example. Um, but we're going to make it a little bit fancier than this guy right here. I made this one years ago. Um, and I don't necessarily like that eye that much. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick an eyeball. So we have a couple different options here. I personally like the, the like dragony looking eyeball. I don't know about you guys. I personally like this one. Um, I got some bigger eyeballs. These are more like owl size. And I was just going to show you, um, another just example. These are actually rose quartz. So if you want to use these for um, also making little dolls, you can buy these online. So you can actually make little like gem eyes, which I think is also really cool. So you can make make creepy gem eyes. 
just as an example. And I have a couple of um, like little pink eyes here, but I think I think we'll use the dragon eye. I do like this one too, though. A little spooky eye. Now, if you want to get your own eyes, these a lot of these I just buy from Van Dyke's taxidermy supplies. So if you go to Van Dyke's taxidermy supplies, you can see that they sell these sorts of eyes in, in bulk. So they're easy to get a hold of. Um, so yeah, there's one of our eyeballs. Oh, I have a sparkly one. Oh, I do have a sparkly one. Where's my other sparkly one? It's a mystery. All right. Well, I only have one sparkly one. Um, all right. Oh, we're going to put these crystals in here because it's a treasure chest and we want to get treasure. There we go. So much treasure. Um, doot, doot, doot. All right. Make sure my camera is focused. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this, whoop, this eyeball. We're just going to, we're going to glue it. We're going to glue it right here. On, with my hot glue gun that the cord only goes this far did not plan for that one come on come on come on come come on there there you go there you go okay um don't do what i'm doing right now it's very hot uh it'll go through the glass i have pretty much lost all feeling in my fingers don't worry about getting it on the eyeball it will be okay there we go all right make sure it sits like that I can't even tell you how many times I've burned myself with a glue gun. <laughs> All right, there we go. So this more or less is to just stick it on here for now. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. All right, we did it. It's weird, I do have like, it's weird because I'm backwards. It's weird. Um, All right, so that's just pretty much tacked on there a little bit, so. Now that we have that, I'm gonna move the rest of my eyeballs because we don't need we don't need all these eyeballs here right now. Goodbye, eyeballs. Goodbye. I'll just make a little bit more room here. Okay. All right. So now what we've got here, um, this this can this is totally up to you depending on what you want to do. So this is a piece of deer skin. Um, and if you have a Tandy leather or any kind of leather store in your hometown, usually there's Tandy leather everywhere. Um, I know I could put two eyes on it, but I like, I like that it's in the middle. I want one eye on my mimic. Like there, there's no, you don't necessarily need two eyes. You can have one. Maybe this mimic lost an eye in a fight. Um, so anyway, this is, this is, this is deer skin. And I try to find a fun little, like, a good kind of like dangly part of it. So if you see right here, boop, 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 12, yeah, you put more than, more than one eye. You can do whatever you want. Um, we could put, like we actually could, if we wanted to, we could put like another eye over here. Ooh, spooky. We could just make more than one eye. Ooh. Like a little spooky, like. I'm not adding the teeth yet either. Oop. All right. I don't know. Do you guys think we should put another eye? I, I feel like mimics don't need the same eye. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm making, I'm just making executive decisions on this mimic. Mimic box of many eyes. Yes. Um, but anyway, so this is deer skin. And uh, I think what little edge we're going to use is this one. Cause it's got, you can see it's got like a little natural edge to it. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. And so this little natural edge right here, you can see it's already got like a whole couple of little holes, which we might be able to use to our advantage. Oh, you can see it's a so spooky. Oh, here's, here's a natural little hole too. That's perfect. Yeah. See, so this is kind of showing you what we're going for is this like creepy, like little front piece. This hole's actually too big. So we want to get some, we really want it to have a little bit of like eye shape to it. If you can see like that, that actually might work perfect right there. It looks like I already cut a little bit. What I meant, maybe he's a nice mimic. Maybe he just like wants to hang, you know? Um, okay, so I think I'm going to use this little natural hole that I have right here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of this just so that I can have less to work with. So I'm going to move that. All right, let's see. I kind of feel like 
because I do like the natural edge on this right here. But I also like that I can like bring that. Okay, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. We'll make it we'll make it work depending on what we want to do with the the rest of the the leather here. Because sometimes what I actually do will is that I'll take I'll take this and kind of make like a little sort of just a top to it, which I might I don't know, I might like that better. I'm being indecisive. I'm sorry. <laughs> Give it one one horn, yeah. All right, so I'm going to do, I think actually, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. So usually for this kind of thing, I like to make like a little like kind of circling design or something that sort of looks a little bit more natural. Gosh, I haven't done this in so long. Thank you for bearing with me. I miss making crafts like I actually I want to get back into doing it just just for the funsies of it, you know. All right. You know what the thing I said about the natural edge we're not gonna we're not gonna do it we're gonna just make our own I changed my mind. All right and see what i'm doing right now is i'm making one little cut Boop. like you don't want to make it too big you want to make sure that it's just big enough to where. To where the eyeball will fit right in the middle. You don't want it to be too big. You can even like tear it a little bit. Because see, you want it to almost look like an eyelid like that. Ooh, spooky. All right. So now what we're gonna do, now that we have this piece that I'm pretty happy with, has some like little dangly bits and gross bits hanging off. I like that. Um, we're gonna take some hot glue and we're gonna go, I'm gonna do it over here so I don't like burn myself, of course. Um, I'm gonna more or less while it's still hot, put it on the back of this piece of um, leather. Let me grab one more because I'm running out. Ugh. I also want to get a little bit, sorry, it's in my mouth, underneath the eyeball piece here. Whoop. There, All right, that's good enough. So I'm going to take that. And then again, this eye is glass. So if you do get a little hot glue on it, that's OK. Um, it comes off really easy because it's glass. You can just peel it off just like that. Yeah. All right. So now you can see we've got a spooky looking eyeball right on top of our little chest right there. That's pretty cool. Oh my gosh, my my bird Paco downstairs is just a dootin' away. He's just dootin' away. Yes, Paco. He's mad that he's not doing. He's not doing crafts too. Oh yeah, you can see my tattoo, my little cranium rats. I, yeah, that's right. You can see, you can finally see a close up of my little cranium rat tattoos. Look at this little guy. Look at him. All right, boop, boop, boop. Okay, I'm gonna stick a new glue gun in this guy. Um, I have a lady of pain on the upper part of my arm, but you know. I'm not supposed to because she'll maze me. That's that's what I heard. I don't want to get mazed, you guys. I don't I don't want that. That's that's too that's too scary for me. All right. Do do do. Oops. Okay. All right. So now we pretty much got this all nice and glued down on there, which is excellent. So I think what I would do after this, usually if we were doing a like, um, how much hot glue do you think I'd use in my life? Oh, gosh, but too, a lot, I, like too much probably. <laughs> I mean, I, I've done, I try to like not use too much of it. Like something like this is fine, but if you're using it like on a costume, you just want to make sure that it sticks because otherwise it'll just fall apart. <laughs> glue is very important. Uh, what kind of glue you use is also very important. Um, oh, all right, anyway. So I'm trying to decide what else I want to do with this. So usually what I'll take after this is I'll do some painting or whatever. For this guy, what I was thinking is I was kind of thinking of just making him a little bit more wrinkly, like that. I'm kind of getting some gross little wrinkles in there. And then this is just rub and buff. Um, 
don't know if you've seen rub and buff before, but it's amazing for this kind of stuff. You're supposed to just use your finger, which you can, or you can use um, a paintbrush, whatever, you, whatever you want. Yeah, and that eyelid, that's literally just a piece of leather on a glass eye. That's it. That's all you got to do. And then you make an eyelid. And I'll show you, we're going to add something to make it look even spookier. I don't know how old this rub and buff is. It's probably like real old. Oh, no, it's all right. It's actually okay. Oh, so shiny. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of rub and buff around the edge here and along the eyelid. So now you can see it almost looks like a little golden-y. And this you wanna make sure not to get too much because it will it will stain the glass. It has a tendency to do that because it's a wax-based um, thing. But we're gonna add some to the edges here. Make it look a little shiny. And add over here. But I like how the rub and buff makes the, le it, it brings out the like, the grain and the leather, which I think is super cool. So then it almost looks like it's like part of like skin. And I just think that's real neat. I just think that's neat. Oh, the chickens are good. Um, I was just outside with them giving them a snack before we started, so we started filming. Um, so if you want, you can take, once you have this, your chest stained and all that kind of stuff, you can take the rub and buff and just go around at it on the little edges. Just makes it look all spooky. Um, all right. Now I was going to do, hold on. I'm going to go grab my gold pen because that was the other thing I forgot to get. So I'll be right back because I need to go to my other desk where all my other craft supplies are to go get my gold pen. <laughs> because apparently I have too many craft supplies. got my pants. Okay. So more or less, these are just paint pens. And I pretty much just use them to do cool symbols or designs on whatever you want. Like if you want to draw something, like arrow or like, like magical runes, that kind of stuff. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna toss up some runes on here. Because why not some alchemy symbols, the little moon, the crescent moon. We'll put some more than one crescent moon. It blinked. <laughs> um, we'll put another crescent moon. There we go. Uh, like triangle. There. And see, and you can pretty much do whatever you want on this sort of thing, add a little designs. All right, so we're just adding some fun little magic designs. If I have, I actually have, hold on. <laughs> I actually have a lot of my books up here. So if we wanted to, um, hold on, is this it? Oh yeah, here it is. Oh no, that's my other. I have a whole book on uh, the high magic of talismans and amulets, as well as another book on designs for uh, uh, grimoires. So we could just put actual an actual like medieval talisman design on there if we wanted to. Like, oh, here's a medieval talisman. That's pretty sick. Uh, let's see, oh, there's some more. These are real designs, by the way. All like cool, actually taken from history. Let's see. 
says, uh, when worn around a man's neck, the claw of the owl is a good luck charm and phylactery. What do you know? <laughs> anyway, there, I used my, my history degree. <laughs> okay. So I think I'm pretty happy with how this looks. It's pretty spooky. I'm gonna add like a couple little different colors on here, just to add a little bit more depth. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys what I do to finalize it. But first I'm gonna show you what to do if you want to add teeth to the mimic. Um, I have a couple different kinds of clay here. So this is just super sculpy, which I'm sure you've all seen before. And this is a uh, this is air air clay, so I you can use either of these. Um, I would recommend doing super sculpy. So pretty much you can just make a couple of teeth. Just make a couple of teeth. Um, this color of sculpy isn't necessarily the best color to use. If you have it available, I would use translucent sculpy. Translucent sculpy is actually what they use to make teeth in masks for special effects. So it actually does come out as a uh, as a teeth color. So that is um, that's also a possibility. So more or less, what you want to do is just stick them in your little the edge of the mimic on the inside. Make sure that you can still close the box. So just kind of stick them there, just so you can just barely barely see it, so it doesn't come over the edge. Uh, the grimoire book, well, I have one book that's, um, it's just called the Book of Grimoires. And then there's another one called The High Magic of Talismans and Amulets. I have a lot, I have a lot of books. <laughs> I have a lot of medieval books. <laughs> I also have all my d, d books back here. All my, all my Planescape books are back behind me. Um, but anyway, so pretty much. What you're going to do is just stick your little toothies in there like that. And then you'll take them out. Oop. You'll take them out of the out of the mimics like little mouthy. And then you'll bake them because Sculpey just takes a little time to bake. And then you'll glue them in separately. So we obviously can't do that for our little demonstration. But if you want to add teeth, that's how you're that's how you're going to do it. It's either baking clay or paper clay. Let it dry and then put then glue them in. Um, that's pretty much the easiest way to do it. They will be a little bit fragile, but you know, just be careful. All right. And if you wanted to as well, you could take the inside. If you wanna make this into like a safe little dice box, you can totally just glue some leather on the inside and give it like a nice little, nice little dice box look. Let's see, put some little dice in there. Oh, that's nice. Nice little dice box. Oh, the, the dice are green again. Wait, hold on. I'll get them to change, I promise. Eh, come on. Now they're green. They're gonna be blue. I believe in you, dice. <gasps> they're blue! Wait, this one is gonna change to blue. It's all blue now, green. Wait, blue, oh, it's magic! Anyway, okay, I'm done. <laughs> All right. So anyway, you could also use this for your dice is what I'm saying. All right. One of the last things, which is one, it's not even one of the last things. It's one of the like more detailed things of making something like this um, is something that I learned again when I used to do special effects stuff. And please don't mind the fact that I'm going to be using a chicken feather to, to make to, to stir up my glue. <laughs> I apologize in advance. Um, so what we're using is two part epoxy. Um, th so this is just regular two part epoxy, five minute epoxy that you get from the craft store. I'm gonna wait for my silly camera to like actually focus. I believe in you camera. There you go. No, you still gonna be? Oh, it's because I got too close to the dice. There. Okay. All right. So this is two-part epoxy. Um, same sort of difference is that you would... Eh, this sort of thing is also used in special effects to make teeth and, um, and eyes and things like that look watery. So it smells real bad. But what we're pretty much going to do, I'm using this chicken feather because that's apparently 
more biodegradable and having like actual sticks that I could use like a professional. <laughs> All right, now that we've mixed this up, it's a two part epoxy again. So what we want to do is use this little feather or wood piece or whatever you end up using as a kind of like goopy drip on the eyeball. So if you see what I'm doing here, I'm adding it to the more or less to the edge and to the corners to make it look like it's it's wet. And I, I've seen um, a lot of people make these like types of boxes and stuff and it, and they look super cool, but I always like it when you can add a little bit of like a little bit of like wetness to the edge. Or a lot. Make him like a nasty crying mimic, whatever. Maybe he's sad or she or they. Doesn't matter. They're a mimic. They're just gonna be sad no matter what. Okay. All right, so I'm adding more around the edge. And crying is a free action, yes. Exactly. I'm gonna give him like a sad little like goopy tear. And you can also do this to the teeth. So once you make the teeth, you can also like add some, add some eye goop to that. And that's always fun. And so I do try to get a little bit in the crease here on the eyeball because even though now you have to be really careful not to get it all over the eye, but cause it just will make it look neat. If you can get a little bit in there just to kind of give it that, like an, it's an actual creature sort of look. Yes, this is a this is a feather from my chicken Badu. She's a big chicken. <laughs> She's a big girl. All right, I'm just gonna leave that there. I'm gonna let it dry. We have because again, it's about. I'm gonna get it close so that you guys can see. Ooh, it's so goopy. Ew. Actually, it's gonna be like that. Yeah, so you can see how that looks really shiny and goopy now. That's what we want. Now you've added a little bit of fun, like realism to it. And if you, you know, like if you want, you can also paint it. I didn't bring the paint over to do like a fun little painting tutorial, but you can do, you can literally do whatever you want to these little boxes. You can add more leather to them. You can add leather scraps to them. You can, you can just go all, all out on it. But I wanted to make it simple and easy just to show you guys a just a quick little quick little easy tutorial. And you can make these for your DM. How fun is that? It's so easy. It's literally just a piece of leather and a glass eye. And that's it. It's it's a super, super easy craft. Um so yeah, I'm gonna see if I'll show you some of the how we how I would personally sculpt the teeth too. If you want, you could even like take some crystals and make. Crystal teeth. Oh, that'd be so cool. Like you just put crystals all along there. That'd be awesome. I feel like that would make a really cool mimic. I just, just be creative with it. You know, it's not, there's no right or wrong way to make something like this. Like, all, like, look at that. You can make cool, like oh, crystal teeth. I love it. I used to make stuff like this all the time, just for fun. <laughs> All right, so pretty much what you're gonna do, make a little tooth flat in the back so that it's not too pointy. Again, try to use, like I said before, try to use um, translucent Sculpey. That will, cause it'll automatically look like teeth. It'll already have that teeth color. Hello. Um, I never actually worked Oh no, I did I did work as a, a a stitcher and as a I made puppet costumes for Robot Chicken for a while, but I've never done like makeup makeup. I've only done like practical effects, like things that are that are more like uh bigger like animatronic things were the places that I worked at and the stop motion studio I worked at once. Which was fun. I learned a lot. I used to do this as a job doing special effects stuff and it was great. I really enjoyed it. Ooh, ooh, okay. But now I just do it for fun, which I should, which I should do, do it more often. But yeah, I'm taught, I'm self-taught in the makeup, makeup land. All right. 
So see, now I've got a couple of tooth, a couple of toofies. And I would take these and bake them for like 15 minutes. And then you got, you got old teeth, you got old teeth for your mimic. Easy, easy, easy. And this guy, again, this is five minute epoxy. So it's still drying. It's going to keep drying for a second. I do like the idea of crystal teeth though. I think that would be really cool. Um, I brought a couple other fun things to show you guys. So I used to make these little guys. Um, this is a little cranium rat that I made for uh, Chris for our AI, the first AI game that I did in 2017. I made this little cranium rat and he's holding a little waffle. And uh, he's got the same sort of thing. It says AI 20, 2017, but he was cast in black resin and I just sculpted him from um, monster clay. And then I used rub and buff to make him look, look all like old and aged. So that's sort of the same effect that I did on this guy. Look how beauty is, oh, cranium rat. Oh, I don't have the mold for him anymore. It was just a fun little thing that I did. All right, I think what I want to do is I want to put, well, this is still growing. Yeah, that's still sticky. Well, that's still sticky. I'm going to try and make a little, like, just a little bottom to this chest so we could put dice in it. Just want to put some dice in there, you know, keep them safe. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a piece of leather on top of this. There, go, go there, go away. <laughs> Toxic glue. <laughs> um, but yeah, Planescape is my favorite D and D setting. I don't know if any of you have ever played in Planescape before, but I, I love that setting a lot. I didn't have many people to play D and D with as a kid, so I would just read the books. We did try and start a D and D club uh, when I was a teenager but my principal of my school thought that we were going to be doing blood sacrifices. <laughs> so even though we tried to make a D&D &D club, uh, it was very short-lived considering the like satanic panic of, of uh, Redlands, California, middle of nowhere, which is pretty hilarious. Um, this is the same, the same principal of my school who thought that life drawing was pornography and I was like mm. <laughs> fun stories fun stories but I I loved all the Planescape stuff from learning about it from Neverwinter Nights and uh, Planescape Torment and so I ended up buying all the books and just like learning all of the stuff for one day who knew who knew when I needed it all right doo -doo. All right, so pretty much I just stuck this in. Yeah, my eyeball, it's fine. It's all fine. My eyeball's fine. And I put a little line so we could see how far that is. All right. <laughs> that's, yeah, Judge Fudge, that's cool. I mean, I think it's, it's, I think it's amazing that it's so much more acceptable now and it's not a like weird like uh-oh we're doing secret blood rituals i don't know what they thought man all right i'm gonna put this little little ruggy down here all right so now we have a little, it's lined, a lovely little, little lined, lined guy. Look at that. Look how, look how nice they look. We put some crystals in there. Whoa. All right. I don't know what else I want to add to this. We can, you can make suggestions. I have so many things we could add to this. Like we could add more eyes. We could put another eyeball. We could put a tiny eyeball over here. We could put another eyeball right there. Maybe one in the front. Oh, a front eyeball would be fun. We should do a front eyeball. I feel like a front eyeball would be fun. Let's do. Let's do that. Yeah, we've got. We still have the mood dice. They're all blue now because it's my attic is very warm. <laughs> 
All right. Oop, there we go. Oh, so pretty. I saw so I have gold and I have silver. There's silver and gold dice. And I'll probably, whoever gets the mood dice, one of you, I'll probably just send the chest along with you. Like, here you go. Also have this mimic chest. It's a prize. Sprinkle some crystals on it. Oh, more than more dice. Yeah, here's the silver ones. They're so pretty. I can't, I'm trying to show you how fast they change color so fast that you like can barely even see it. Oh, see now, okay, now it's blue. So the one has the little crying eye on it <laughs> because that's a, that's a free action. Doo -doo -doo. They just get so warm so fast. I mean, mostly because it's summer. And there's the gold ones. Ooh. Um, but yeah, they're not even out yet because we're still working on um our little like zine that's gonna go with it. But they will be it soon. All right. I think I feel like maybe we'll put one more eye. Let, let's oh, we could put one of these spooky like pink eyes. That might be fun. They're kind of tiny, but. Oh, soy nuts. Thank you. Um, I would love to do some more craft streams. I think that'd be awesome. I just realized I didn't have my headphones on. Um, I'm going to now look at the questions. <laughs> Uh, where do you find inspirations for your crafts? Um, I mean, for these sorts of things, I've actually, I feel like I've made one of these before. Um, I mean, I used to be really inspired by like, gosh, like again, like Planescape, D and D my first cosplay ever was tiefling. Um, <laughs> so I just, I just have always really liked D and D. Uh, I haven't done as much D and D stuff recently, but I hope that one day it will be okay again. Um, let's see any top tips you like to feel. Oh, and nature. Of course. I'm also inspired by nature. I love nature and mushrooms and birds. I love birds. Um, any top tips you like to feel would have been, have benefited you the most when starting out with crafts. Um, I think, I mean, now, nowadays you can watch anything on YouTube. Like the tutorials I had when I was younger were definitely not as thorough or as awesome as all the YouTube stuff now. So I feel like just, just learn from watching videos or watching, um, other crafters. Like, uh, I learned everything I know from my friend, Ted, uh, and his name is evil Ted on YouTube. And he has amazing tutorials. Um, also Bill Doran. He's another person who I've learned a lot from watching his tutorials. He's amazing. Um, there's just so many good crafters these days that are just so good. They're just so good at, at teaching you. I feel like better than, than I could ever be. <laughs> um, um, and it says, Holly, do you recommend that moldable plastic stuff for teeth? I do. I recommend, I mostly recommend though, uh, the translucent Sculpey. So if you are going to make teeth, I would use translucent Sculpey. Um, you can just get that at any craft store or online. It's super common, but it is very fragile. So covering it with epoxy or something like that might actually help. Ooh, dude, this eye is so spooky. Okay, where should we put? Oh, I like that. That looks cool. I actually feel like I put too much rub and buff on here. I might have gone too buck wild on the rub and buff, you guys. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just got you just got it, you know. All right, I'm gonna put some glue here. Sometimes you just gotta go wild with the rub and buff. Get out of there, spider web. Fun, fun fact, I also used to work in a haunted house. And um, so if you can tell, uh, so glue, you know how glue gun strings look like, they look like um, spider webs. Well, that's exactly what they are in haunted houses. Uh, they hook an air hose up to a glue gun, more or less like an industrial glue gun, and then spray uh, hot glue all over everything. And that's what makes spider webs. 
So that's a that's a fun little spooky fact, right? Like spooky spider webs. Oh no, so spooky. I feel like I want to put hmm, where'd my other little pink eye go? I'll put one more eye. We went from one eye to like multiple eyes. I'm sorry. This is this is just how things work. <laughs> We're just having we're just having fun. We can make these decisions. Ooh, this might be a perfect size for this eye. Ooh. Remember when you're picking out leather for this, or if you're using cloth, make sure that it's something that either has texture and you can bend. Like you, you don't have to. Another thing, which is a, a really good um, tip, is if you don't want to go to a craft store or you don't want to go to like what's it called? Um, like Tandy Leather or any of the leather places. The um, using like old leather jackets and coats from thrift stores also works really, really well. Um, so if you're gonna be making something and you wanna do like do exactly what I'm doing here, go to a thrift store and feel all of the like old leather pieces, find one you can tear up and then you've got leather that's like a, a, a fraction of the price. Um, What's your, you know, oh, I just answered that question. What's your best budget crafting tip? <laughs> yeah, go to thrift stores and get, get um, just get clothes, old clothes that you can take apart. Like um, you can find all kinds of stuff at thrift stores or any anything like that, especially leather stuff because leather stuff is so expensive and it's such an expensive thing to do. Like I used to live in Los Angeles where I had access to the fabric district and now I live in Seattle and I don't have access to as much stuff like that. So it's important to be able to like be, be useful or like be able to use what you have more or less. And I grew up in a small town. So like, I'm used to being like, okay, like what can I get from Michael's and Home Depot and the thrift store? <laughs> but another thing about all of this, like crafting stuff is it doesn't have to be perfect. Like, don't try to, don't try to, um, be hard on yourself. Like if you don't like it, if that's okay. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna put one of these rose quartz on here just because I wanna. Um, one of my favorite. What's my favorite medium to work with? I think. I mean, I used to love sculpting. I, I loved sculpting a lot. Um, using Sculpey is, I think, what I really started out in in crafting. Um, but I've learned over the years. I really like using foam. That's always fun. Um, I love. But I. I. I think. Um, the last big costume I made was my Strix costume for, um, for Ack Inc. And I learned how to make hats. So I actually learned how to make uh, witch hats and like do felting. And I really enjoyed felting. I really enjoyed doing a lot of the leather work. So I've always really liked like medieval style crafts too. So I think uh, anything that's like a natural material, like anything like old medieval-y are things that I really like to work with. I think it's just really fun. Am I good at any of that? Probably not, but I enjoy it and that's what matters. All right, ooh, I like that. I'm sorry, now I'm just having fun. I'm just having fun with this. Um, okay, so this is what the creepy like little rose quartz eye looks like and I kind of really like how it looks. I'm gonna get a, cut this guy a little bit more. And then the final thing we'll do is we'll add, um, add a bit more epoxy to the outside and then there we go. Um, I did discover though that making, gosh, making, oh my gosh, he's got two little mean eyes down here. So mean. Um, making hats is actually pretty difficult. <laughs> I learned, um, I definitely learned, but I had to get like a hat form and all kinds of like really interesting stuff to do it. All right, where I go? I'm gonna put some hot glue on here. Again, this is not easy and you will burn yourself. So please be careful. Um, if you're gonna paint a necklace or pendant, what would you use? That depends on the material. So that's kind of like, I feel like when I used to do special effects, like the thing that I learned most, the thing that I learned the most about, um, about crafting more or less is that you have to use the right kind of glue. <laughs> the right kind of glue is a big important thing. So 
and the right kind of paint. So if you're painting a necklace and it's made out of metal, you're still going to need to sand the metal and use a kind of uh, spray paint that adheres to metal specifically. So it really honestly depends. Like if you want to use a leather paint, like something to paint this leather, like it's best to use a leather paint. Like hot glue works on this leather because it has a lot to grip on the bottom. So it's not going to be a problem really coming off. But if I say I used like, like something like Gorilla Glue or something latex based, it wouldn't work as well. Um, what's something you make it, you want to make and you haven't tried yet? I don't know. I mean, there's been a couple things I really want to just play with that I haven't, I haven't recently, but, um, I don't know. I, I, I really want to make some more masks because I just, I like, I really enjoy making masks and I have a, a super cool, like crow mask I want to finish. So one of these days, one of these days I'll finish it up. Let's see here. I feel like now we got, now we went, we went buck wild and put a bunch of eyes all over it. Whatever. See, this is what happens. I had no plan. I didn't know how many eyes I was going to put on this as many as I wanted. We are just going to give them a bunch of eyeballs. I kind of just want to add like a spooky, no, I don't know. We're done. <laughs> We're done. We need to stop. There. Okay. All right. Last thing. I'm going to add some more epoxy. And then we're going to, we're going to go off that. Um, there is faux leather and synthetic fabrics and it will totally like, it will work just the same. So, it, and it's just, it's just what you want to use, but that's why I always suggest going the thrift store route. Um, because not only are you not you know, ha causing any harm to animals or causing any harm to the environment, you're just pretty much reusing something that someone already got rid of. So you don't have to buy leather from Tandy Leather or any of the actual like leather places. But leather is also, it's, just, it's a really complicated thing. Leather is also a byproduct of the meat industry. Um, so they really don't have anywhere to use it because people are still eating meat. Um, so it's really a byproduct. So it doesn't like if you're not necessarily harming the environment, it's it's complicated. But if you choose to not use leather, I am all for that as well. Um, but you can get some pretty sweet pieces at the thrift store. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did on the other one. Just add some spooky. Oh, this one's real goopy. Oh no, it's got like a goopy super goopy look to it. This, one, this, one, this, one's, this one's got an infection. <laughs> oh, this one's good too. Ooh, it's so goopy. It's just, and this is like the leather on the eyes. It's just a really fun thing to play with. Like it's fun. It's just a fun thing to make. And they're, it's really easy too. It's just like, it's just a, you, it's an instant gratification kind of thing. Like, oh, I made a spooky eyeball with some leather. A mimics could have hair. You could put eyelashes if you wanted on, on there. You can do it. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. That's the, the D and D rules, right? Is like, you can make up whatever you want, right? I don't know. I've played with Chris too long. <laughs> Okay. Ooh, so goopy. Gross. So gross. Okay. There we go. Got a bunch of eyeballs. Um, I think what I might add, I might add finish him up uh, off stream because I want to add the teeth and I might add some fur. I think some fur would be really cool. I got some fake fur somewhere around here and we can add some fake fur around this part. Maybe add like a couple of things like that. But, um, but yeah, uh, looks like we're, we're nearing the end. So if anyone has any final questions, please go ahead. Here's our little, I'll show off our little mimic dice box. And then, um, if you catch me on Twitter, I will finish this, uh, over in my own time and then I'll post the final version so you guys can see it. Um, I don't know which one of you will get this. One of you that wins the dice will also get this lovely little chest. I will send it to you with the dice. So you can also get this little, this little guy. But yeah, I think I'm gonna add some fur to him. I do like the idea of crystal teeth. 
I don't know. We'll see. And, uh, and yes, consider donating to the Trevor Project. Do that, do that, do that. But I, I, I like how it came out. I like that we started with one eye and then decided that we were going to have four because I, why not? <laughs> why not four eyes? Why not more than that? I'm just waiting for my epoxy to dry. But yeah, so I'm going to make, I might have some translucent skull teeth. So I might make the teeth out of that and then show you guys. So if, again, if you're on Twitter, on, on the tweets, then you can, you can see the little finished product. Chicken feather not included. <laughs> I agree. A grip with a green. It is better with more eyes. I agree. Um, I really want to make a fun, like, I don't know. Like Sculpey is just so great because you can also bake these guys, like the actual crystals in, in the uh, Sculpey. So it's pretty sweet. And so you can put another eye right there. Let's keep throwing eyes on there. Just keep doing it. Yeah, thanks for having me, you guys. Oh, I love abyssal chickens. They're so cute. More eyes, more teeth. Well, I think the I think the translucent sculpey will look better as teeth. It's the same as this stuff. It's just a different color. Tentacles would also be really cool. All right, I'm gonna scoot this up so we can say say hello goodbye. Oh, there we go. There's my face. I still have a face. Hello, 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 everyone. How's it going? Thank you for watching our little buddy here, our spooky buddy. Um, you can make again. You can make. Any sort of mimic that you want. Give them teeth, give them eyes, give them fur, tentacles, go buck wild. Um, and yes, if you want to follow, um, I'm over at We Crowing Hens now. That's uh, where I am everywhere. Besides, yeah, <laughs> thank you, Jack. I'm trying. <laughs> so if you go to We Crowing Hens on YouTube and on Twitch, you'll find me. Uh, I do videos on witchcraft and foraging and making stuff and crafts. Um, just come hang out. Our last video was on yarrow. It was pretty sweet. Um, and yeah, it's just a, a mushroom hunting. I've been going mushroom hunting. It's very exciting. And, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. And I'm congrats to venture maidens for raising so much money for the Trevor project. I think that's awesome. And, uh, yeah, I thank you for having me, having me back, having me do a fun little craft. I realized that I, the whole time I had this little silicone pad here so that I didn't have to put my nasty toxic glue on my, my workspace, but I did it anyway. So I was prepared, but I wasn't. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a good rest of your block party. Bye-bye.